Welcome back. Well, in the week that ended July 19, the total value and number of contracts traded on the AFX commodities market increased. However, both the number of deals and the AFX export index are closed in the red. For more now, let's uh, bring in uh, Michael Martin, portfolio manager at AFX. Hello, Michael. Great to have you. I uh, hope you've had some RAM. <laughs> No, I haven't. My Muslim friends haven't come through, I swear. Same here. They haven't come through. <laughs> same same here, Michael. That's same what we've been complaining <laughs> about. Honestly, I mean, I this holiday seems to be quite uh, different. You're not alone. I mean, we're not yeah. getting any round exactly. from our Muslim friends. Perhaps it's uh, mean, the effect of that inflation. Exactly, I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. Hmm. All right, Ty, well, it's I a holiday. Um, bring us up to speed with our market activities in the week under review. All right, Laddie, thank you very much. Um, so if you look at the table in front of you, and this is us just going over the commodities market summary, uh, the total value of transactions traded on the exchange went up by 71.98% from around 322 million to close to trading week at 555 million. Uh, the total number of contracts traded on the exchange also went up by 294.59% from 8,155 contracts to close to trading week at over 32,000 contracts. The total number of deals, however, fell slightly by 8.70% from 23 deals to close to trading week at 21 deals. The Apex Commodities Index, which is the ACI, went up slightly over the week by 2.57% from 464.78 points to 476.72 points. The Apex Export Index, which is the AEI, however, fell slightly by 4.49% from 179.58 to 171.52. With regards to the volume of contracts traded on the exchange, as I said earlier, we generally saw it, uh, an increase across board uh, from 2,669 contracts, this is for May's, uh, to 30,410 contracts. And then also for soybean, we went, which went up from zero to 1,781 uh, 781 contracts. With regards to price changes on the exchange, uh, we saw the biggest increase in Mays, which went up by 20.52%, gaining 3,939 in the contract value. Uh, to close the trading week at 23,129 uh, per contract. Another commodity that saw increase was soybean, which went up by 13.03%, gaining 4,114 uh, to close the trading week at 35,683 per contract. With regards to the red under the week, we saw cocoa, which fell by 16.04%, losing 17,476 naira in the contract value to close the trading week at 91,500. And with regards to uh, cash unit, not, it also fell slightly by 0.93%, losing just about 400 naira in the contract value to close the trading week at 44,500 naira per contract. And last but certainly not least, we have the Fair Trade Exchange Traded Commodity, which is the FETC, which went up by 20.52%, gaining 2,760 naira in the contract value uh, to close the trading week at 15,000 naira down 52. Uh, now up our contract and as we always say if you want to know more about the commodities market you can always go to our website which is www.afxnigeria.com and if you want to get started trading commodities whether that's spot contracts or fixed income you can always download our app which is available on ios and android so that's it for this week's commodities market update yeah, Michael, just as you haven't uh, eaten ram uh, this holiday, I haven't eaten ram, and I'm wondering why. <laughs> uh, I mean, if the MBS is reporting that uh, inflation numbers are coming down, obviously it's not showing in the market because a lot of people are complaining. Perhaps that's why you and I are not getting the usual ram that we would we, get, yeah. you know, at a season <laughs> like this. Now, looking at this inflation numbers dropping for the third consecutive month, what are the implications of this vis-a-vis uh, -vis investing in the commodities market? Um, thank you very much for that question, Chimizie. And look, uh, we've spoken about this time and time again, and we can sit here and quibble over whether or not you know, inflation is actually you know, going up. Um, many analysts have already come here and talked about the base price effect, uh, meaning that prices at the same time last year were significantly higher, causing the prices uh, as shown, or the numbers as reflected in the inflation rate, to assume or to look like they're not particularly going as high as would be expected. Uh, if you ask the average man on the street, I believe he has a completely different story. I very often buy groceries every other week, and I can tell you that prices have 
gone up and they would essentially remain and we all know that it's not everything that goes up <laughs> that comes down prices don't tend to come down um, but with regards to investing in the commodities market i think it says a whole lot more about what we come here to do on e every single week which is to try and sell you that the commodities market is a viable investment uh, is a viable investment instrument if you look at what has happened over the course of just this season in comparison to other traditional asset classes right so if you look at the uh, the stock exchange the asi which is still negative yet to date right if you look at the average fixed income product which is still less than double digits right if you then compare that with what you essentially have in the commodities market where you see commodities like maize soybean doing over 50 percent i don't think it, it at this point it becomes almost intuitive uh, 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 for you not to it becomes almost intuitive for you not to be invested in the commodities market it doesn't make any sense right and and, and i know that this is the holiday period right and a lot of people have a lot of time to think to reflect on what they're currently doing and, and and a high inflationary environment essentially means one thing right it means that you have to increase your income Come one way or the other. Uh, outside of that, you will not essentially be able to maintain your standard of living, right? Because the cost of living has gone up. Now, and this is me talking to investors and people that are currently listening to us uh, right now. And that is to say, when you look at your investment portfolio and you look at what is currently there right now, I want you to ask yourself a very important question: Why are you not investing in commodities? Because at this point, it doesn't make any sense to me. Right. Right, Michael. I, I ask myself that question every time. <laughs> but I thought you said you bought ginger. What's happening to that? Well, I, I bought a handful of ginger. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I need, I need a hedge. I need a hedge right now, uh, Michael. But anyway, thank you so much, uh, Michael. Jeez. Always, always great to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ladi. And please, if you can get some meat, please send it right over to Abuja. I will. Thank you. I will. I will. Let's make sure. Sure. I will make sure. I just have to make sure yeah. I get a piece we'll of lamb. We'll make that happen. We'll make that happen. You know, this holiday. <laughs> All right, Michael. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, let's uh, look at the role of securitization and the operational role that it plays for the market and how it's designed to protect participants across value chains in the commodities market. Uh, Yusuf Ogumbi, investment manager, Apex. We'll uh, uh, weigh in on this. Uh, great to have you on the program. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Nice to be here again. Thank you so much. So what is the role of uh, securitization in the commodities market and uh, what are the benefits uh, for the market? Yeah, thank you, Ladi. Um, and before we go into the role of um, securitization in this market, um, it might be of benefit to just say a word or two about what securitization is. So it's pretty much the conversion of um, economic assets that have financial value into securities that can be traded between and amongst investors. So think of your piece of land, think of your bag of maize. How can you convert that asset that has economic value into a security that can be traded between investor, investors. That's pretty much what securitization is. And then we then say what's the role of securitization in this market, the commodities market. And it goes back to the conversation we we're having earlier about what, what, how much inflation we, we are experiencing in the economy today, uh, how much prices have gone up, and the effect of that on our investment portfolios. But the question is, can investors invest in the um, commodities market like we used to have it, buying the bag of maize and storing it in their backyards or in a warehouse? That's very, very difficult. And then securitization comes in here. It allows us to convert that physical commodity, maize, soybean, um, into a financial instrument that can be traded on an exchange. And that's what securitization allows us to do. It allows us to broaden the investment class uh, assets that um, investors have access to, and it allows us to deepen the market, allows us to expand the alternatives market, basically. And that's what securitization does. To, um, does. So how, how important is it for exchanges to develop securitized products for key players across the value chain? Very, very important, honestly. And the reason is this. If you don't do it, someone else will do it, one way or the other. And the importance of exchanges is that um, we, there's transparency, there's structure, there's regulation, there's, um, there's visibility for everybody to see what's going on. There's a structure to follow. There are processes to follow in bringing any instrument to the market. And that gives a lot of confidence to investors that this instrument, this instrument or these instruments I'm investing in 
is clear, is transparent, has been vetted by the regulators. I'm not, um, I'm not exposed to losing my money in this kind of instrument, basically through Ponzi schemes and the rest. And that's what exchanges bring discovery, transparency, and structure. And if you are able to do this, if exchanges are able to do this, it gives a lot of confidence to investors, helps them to expand their investment class while not, um, while not being exposed to um, um, dupe, uh, being duped and the likes. All right, but how is AFEX ensuring that uh, securitization plays a, a role in the activities being carried out you know, end to end of the chain? So, um, fantastic question. There, there, there's a place of education, one. There's a place of infrastructure, and there's a place of technology, which is what FX brings to the table. Education, which is what we are doing here, and it, through a number of um, webinars, sessions that we have with investors all, all the time, to explain to them what the products are, how they are brought to the market, and what backs this product. Don't forget, each one of these products have underlying assets backing them. Um, the second one is the infrastructure that supports this. And in this case, I talk about the hard infrastructure. As of today, FX has about 70 um, accredited warehouses across 19 states of the country. That gives a lot of um, leeway for FX to bring this kind of instrument to the market. Because at the end of the day, these commodities need to sit in warehouses. Um, that's two. The third one is technology. And over a number of times, we've talked about comics, we've talked about the platform that investors can go to to visit to have exposure to these instruments, buy them seamlessly. Um, then in the comfort of their houses, they are getting these instruments into their portfolios. And it's significant. Education, infrastructure, and technology. These are opportunities that, these are the ways, these are part of the ways that FX is working hard to bring these instruments to the market. So what are some of the products that FX have for investors to participate in? So as of today, there are a number of products on the exchange. Um, so we talked about the spot contract, uh, where you have your maize, your ginger, your soybean, your cashew, and the likes. Um, we also have the exchange-traded commodity, which is also on the exchange as of today. These two products are more or less securitized products that, brings, that gives investors exposure to the um, commodities market. And as, as we speak, uh, maize at least and soybeans have exceeded um, the 50% mark in terms of returns yeah, season to date. And we have a number of other commodities as well. The uh, exchange traded commodity has also done that. So that gives um, the opportunity for investors to invest in these products, sports contract and FETC, and uh, make fantastic returns over the course of the season. And not, don't forget, this is while being in the comfort of their houses, um, investing through COMEX by FX. All right. Uh, also, uh, you know, what, what are some of these uh, products, you know, that uh, investors are actually looking at on FX? So investors, investors are looking at a wide range of products. Uh, don't forget, we, aside the sports contracts, the exchange-traded commodities, we also have some other um, fixed-income linked commodity product on the exchange. And investors have a very wide um, um, array of products to buy into, uh, depending on the, um, the risk appetite of that, investors, of that investor. Rather. If the investor is a very high-risk um, investor, they go for the sports contract, and it's high reward as well. Um, taking the risk of sports contract could have given you 50% um, year to date. And some other products that investors also think can help them achieve their return objective, but then with a lower risk, um, um, with a lower risk profile. So it's, it's a very wide range, and investors are looking at every, every instrument on the exchange, buying into them as that's when they are available. All right. Well, we'll have to leave it there now. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Yusuf Ogumbi, Investment Manager at Apex. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you very much. Thank you.